Hi guys, it's me, Susan. It's day 88 of the Broken Hip Club. I have good news to report today. Um, actually, it's been going on over the past, I would say, close to a week. Maybe not. Maybe just since the weekend or a little before. Um, my, uh, I seems to, seem to have made a great uh, stride in my walking. Um, behind me, as you see, is my friend Jolie. She is uh, finishing her destruction of a penguin, a stuffed penguin that she's been working on for a while. <laughs> anyway, um, first she takes out all the stuffing and tears it into infinitesimally small pieces and spreads them all over the house. And then uh, she hasn't shown much interest in the uh, the shell, the outer skin of the penguin, until just now. She's really into it now. Um, anyway, I'm walking better um, for the most part. Uh, I bring my cane along with me when I go somewhere, but I'm not using it very much. Sometimes towards the end of the day, I'm feeling a little more uh, uh, tired and uh, there's some pain. But really, um, it's remarkable, especially now that I have, I don't know if I told you I got the lift for my shoe, for my... Uh, my injured leg is now an inch shorter, so I got a heel lift to put in my shoe to try out and see if that helped. Helps me walk more, uh, more evenly because um, I'm worried about, the, you know, I don't know whether the knee pain is being caused by the fact that my gait is so off because of my legs being a different length plus the pain factor. So we're uh, trying out the heel lift to see if that makes a significant difference in uh, my ability to walk uh, without lurching to the side. And uh, so that's real good. I, you know, it helped me to feel like, gee, I, I am, I am going to get better from this. I am going to recover. Um, not, I'm not going to be the person I was before, but, uh, you know, we never are. I mean, even at the end of a day, you're not the person that you were at the beginning of the day. Uh, it may feel like you are, but if you're open, I think if you're open to all the things that happen and all the thoughts and feelings you have during the day, um, every day can be a day of some growth, but uh, this experience certainly has been an enormously uh, productive growth experience. <laughs> growth experience for me, and um, in fact, I'm trying my my uh, my current project is trying to really accept the uh, number of ways that I I feel stuck, and um, the things I'm not doing, the things things that I complain about but don't do anything about. You may have a few of those. And um, really kind of face the fear. Instead of rationalizing, I can come up with excuses for everything. And some of them are super rational and make a lot of sense. But the bottom line is still that I'm. there are things that I'm not doing that I think I want to do. So either I don't really want to do them or um, I'm, I'm stopping myself in some way. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Uh, an example is uh, my banjo practice. I have not, I mean, literally, uh, since, since before I left on my ski trip back in early March, I mean, it's only very recently that I've even touched my banjo. And, you know, I think I know the reason for that. I always end up sort of leaving it until real late in the day to, for, to practice and then I'm too tired, you know, but that's a crock. If I really, if, you know, there's something else. So starting to look at that and realizing that I'm just, I'm not practicing enough to get very good and the fact that I'm not very good is so discouraging to me instead of letting it be inspiring to me, it's actually um, uh, discouraging me, but that's my, that's my head. That's the way I'm thinking about it. So again, using that as an example, I came up with a plan where my goal is every day I'm going to put my hands on my banjo. I have no expectations about how long I'm going to practice or what I'm going to play or if I'm going to, you know, work on a particular problem or what I'm going to do. I just have to put my hands on it. So far that seems to be working. It's moderate enough that I can't really say, well, no, I'm not going to pick it up and hold it. Um, so once I've got it in my hands, I'm going to play a little bit. And then, again, depending on whatever's going on, uh, at least I've gotten started. 
And there are some other things like that in my life. My, um, I don't know, just, just, there's just a lot of things that if I wanted to, and, and what I have been doing is just feeling so overwhelmed by them, getting the lake house ready to sell. That's still, I mean, selling that, selling that house has been a part of my plan to move forward in, um, in changing my work schedule, but I'm stuck on the, I had the huge plumbing problem and, and now the place needs to be totally, um, well, cleaning is not that hard. I mean, getting on, uh, get somebody to clean it is not that hard. I have to move out a lot of stuff. I have um, old, giant, big tube TVs throughout the house. I don't, I haven't bought one of those new flat things that have been around for probably, I don't know, five years, ten years, how long have they been around? I have the original TV that Mike and I bought when I first moved to El Paso 30 years ago. Um, it's a huge console TV, and it's taking up half of the master bedroom in the lake house, you know. But it's perfectly ad it was perfectly adequate for us and for me. So uh, stuff like that, I've got to get stuff done, and I have really been hiding behind the excuse of my uh, injury and uh, being too tired or feeling sorry for myself. Oh, poor me, you know, I can't even walk. Of course I can't get this stuff together. And I've, I'm really trying to face that I'm keeping myself stuck and uh, I've got to understand some of the fear better so that I can start making these little goals and actually doing them. And uh, so hopefully uh, hopefully recognizing that will, will help me. I mean, I'm really admitting there's a lot of things that I'm afraid of and, um, and that's really okay. And uh, you know, you can't fix what you don't acknowledge and some of the stuff I'm not gonna be able to fix, I just have to accept it maybe. And um, I don't know, I think that's what, uh, that's what really, um, I want to say that's what life is about. It's sort of like gradually figuring out what, what you want and what you're afraid of and then constructing a way to make your life more what you want and less what you're afraid of. And um, as soon as I figure out how to do that, you will be the first to know, okay? I will definitely let you know. Um, I can say that this whole this whole experience I feel has been as traumatic as it really has been for me. It's it's been a uh, a huge push forward in self awareness and um, self acceptance and and uh, facing some of the things that I think I just kept hidden behind uh, a routine uh, just. I don't know, being too busy to really give it any thought. I don't know how to describe how I've been handling stuff, but the, the not being able to handle a lot of things has helped me to see how many things I'm really not handling that I was hiding from before. So uh, it, it's good news. It, it, it doesn't always feel like good news, but I, I just really believe it is. And thank goodness um, my body's feeling better and is going to be able to help me more in um, in dealing with whatever I have to do. I uh, thank you all for watching. I uh, appreciate your continued support. I don't think I have any um, any new medical problems to report. <laughs> You'll be glad to hear. I did have a butt scope on Monday. I don't know if I mentioned that the last time. Um, I said to the doctor. It's my gastroenterologist. I said, why am I having a butt scope when I just had a PET scan that said the tumor was gone? And he said, it's like why people, some people wear suspenders even though they have a belt on. We just have to make sure. Uh, the PET scan, you know, was uh, conclusive, but the butt, <laughs> the oncologist wanted me to look up there. It was called a flexible sigmoidoscopy. Um, it's kind of like a short colonoscopy. They just go up in the... Anyway. So he looked around. Tommy was gone. There's nothing there. So I was happy to hear that. And he said, uh, you don't have to have another one for three years. So that was good. I was happy about that. So one by one, I'm getting some of these things eliminated. My, my next appointment with the uh, 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 orthopedic guy for my hip is uh, a month from now. So I'm hoping by then I'll be able to just bebop into his office and uh, or I should say limp into his office but not have any pain and be pretty 
pretty back to normal. Okay, so that's my report. I, it's both uh, both mental and physical, uh, doing better, and uh, it's it's great having you all to talk to, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. So you have a great, it's, let's see, it's only Wednesday, but it's hump day for me because I leave work early and go, uh, go visit with Cameron. We had some sushi and played some video games today. So uh, the weekend's fast approaching. I hope you have a great one. And I'll see you soon on the next episode of The Broken Hip Club. In the meantime, remember to live well, laugh often, and love much. Bye now.